This week, this Shabbos is going to be Shabbos Mavarach and Elul. We're going to bless the month of Elul. And of course, Shabbos is coming up next week. And of course, that means we're going to be starting to blow the shofar in preparation for Rosh Hashanah when we blow the shofar for real. So today we're going to look at the mitzvah of the shofar. There's a lot of information to get through. So we'll try to push forward. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do what the mitzvah is, where it comes from in the Torah, the basic mitzvah. And then we're going to learn a piece of the Gemara which demonstrates um, how the shofar is the main element of Rosh Hashanah. The most important part of Rosh Hashanah is the shofar. Then we're going to get to what the symbol and what the message of the shofar is. And then we're going to get to an even deeper level of the shofar. So kind of three levels of the shofar. Okay? The mitzvah, the message, and then an even deeper level. All right? Ready? Okay, so first the mitzvah. The Pasuk says, this is the Pasuk in Vayikra, chapter 23, verse 24. As you can see there, Chavkimu Chavdalad, Pasuk says, Dabel B'nei Yisrael, Hashem says, speak to the Jewish people, Lamar saying, Vachodesh Hashvi on the seventh month, Be'echel Achodesh on the first day. What's that? Which day is that? Seventh month, first day. Which day is that? Yeah. This is a Pasuk. The first month is what? Nisan. Hmm? That's right. The first month is always Nisan. The Rosh Hashanah is not the beginning of the month. It's the beginning of the year. Month and year. That's right. It's Tishrei. Because the month and year are different. The month follows the moon. And the year follows the sun. Right? The, mon, the, the moon circles the earth 30, every 30 days. That's a month. And the first month is Nisan. Whereas the year is because the sun revolves around the earth 365 and a bit days, and that's the year. So the beginning of the year is Shana, but the beginning of the month is Nisan. So the seventh month. It does every year. The first month is Nisan, and the first day of the year is Shana. Before what? The months and year are different calculations. It happens to be that's 12 months in a year, but the months and year are separate calculations. Right, so the year is just the year. And then Nisan is month number one. Whereas Rosh Hashanah is day number one of the year. Whereas Nisan is month number one of the next 12 months. It is. It's strange. It's not the same time. That's just the way it is. So the seventh month is Tishrei. Nisan, year seven, Tamas of Elul, Tishrei. So in the seventh month, first day, Rosh Chodesh Tishrei, which is also known as Rosh Hashanah, beginning of the year. Yilachem, it should be for you, Shabbat Sain, a day of rest, so no working. Zichrein Trua, remember it through Trua. What's Trua? To blast the shofar. That's what Trua means. Remember it by blasting. Mikra Chodesh, it's called a holy day. That's all Torah says. That is the Pesach which says to blow a shofar. It doesn't say, and you shall blow the shofar on this. It doesn't say that in the Torah. It just says, a remembrance of Teruah, a remembrance of blasting. But in Tehillim, it's not what the mitzvah is, but at least Dovod Melech talks about the mitzvah and gives a little bit more details. He says, Tiku the shofar, blow the shofar on the month, the Kesel Yem Chagenu, on the time when the moon comes to a holiday. So when does the moon come to a holiday? The new moon is always on the first day of the month, right? So when's the only time you have a, you have a holiday on the first day of the month? Rosh Hashanah. Every other holiday is not when the moon comes to the beginning. It's actually when the moon's in the middle. All the other holidays, Sukkot and Pesach on the 12th or the 15th day of the month when the moon is full. Shavuos is different because Shavuos is 50 days after Pesach. It's not, count, not connected to the days of the month, really. So the only holiday which comes, the the holiday that's on the day when the moon comes to the beginning, is Rosh Hashanah. It's the first day. And then what does he say to do? Tiku b'chaydash, shoifar. Blast the shoifar. So now we have two details, right? Teruwa from the Pasuk and the Torah, and Tekia, Tiku, from the Pasuk and Tehillim. Clear? Okay. 
And that's what the Gemara says. Omar Rabbi Tzach Rabbi says, Lama Toikin Rashana. Why do we blow the Shefer on Rashana? The Gemara asks, Lama Toikin? What do you mean you're asking why do we blow the Shefer on Rashana? Rachmana Omar, the Pasuk says, Tiku, blow. Ella, rather, what is Rabbi Yitzchak asking? Lama Marian, why do we do a Trua? What's the difference between Trua and Tkiya, by the way? Anybody know? Between Tkiya and Trua, the meaning of the Pasuk. And I didn't mention Shvarim anywhere. I didn't mean, it doesn't say Shvarim, right? Trua and Tkiya. What's the meaning between Tkiya and Trua? Tkiya is a straight blast. Terua is a broken blast. So when you go to... That's right. So we'll get that in a second. Tkiya is a straight blast. To, that's Tkiya. The Pasuk says to do Tkiya. And then the Pasuk says to do a Terua. Terua is a broken blast. Now the question is, how do you break it? Do you break it in a bunch of smaller ones? Two, 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 two. Or do you break it into three ones? Two, two, two. And the Gemara discusses it depends on different ways of how a baby cries. Either baby cries, eh, eh, so that's three longer ones, or baby cries, like whimpering, <laughs> you know? So it's two, 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 two. Following? So that's why we have different types. But really, they're all called terua, because terua is a broken sound. So first, the Bitzluk is asking, why do we blow a tkia, a straight blast? Why? Because the Pasuk says tiku. Lama marian, why do we do a broken blast, a terua? Marian rahmana amar zikhran terua, because the Pasuk says a remembrance of terua. Okay. So there we see that the shofar blowing is really divided into two, tkia and terua. That's what the Pasuk says to do. And because we have two versions of terua, we end up doing all types. We do one set of tkia and one type of terua, one set of tkia and the other type of terua, and then we do one set with both types of terua in the middle. Follow? That's why we have one set of tkia, shvarim terua, which is a combination of both types of terua and then tkia. It's one set. Then we do another set of tkia, the other terua, two, 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 and then tkia. That's another set, just in case that's the other version of what the Trua means. And then we have a third set of Tkia, Shvardim, which is another version of Trua, and then the Tkia. Clear? Clear? Okay. And the Gemara says something very interesting. Gemara says like this. And the reason why I'm quoting this Gemara is because I want to show to you, I want to demonstrate to you how um, important and how the Shaifer is really the centerpiece of Rosh Hashanah more important than the tefillah, it's more important than anything. The real truth of what Shafer is all about is in the Shafer. The next two Gemaras are going to show that to us. Okay? Actually, just the next Gemara, and then we'll do a Rambam before we get to the next Gemara. So let's see. Pasuk says like this, that in the times of the Beis Hamikdash, when they would blow the Shafer in the Beis Hamikdash, it would be, Besides the Shafer, you had two trumpets. So they had three things blowing at the same time. They have the shofar, and on two sides they would have trumpets. And in Shul, we only have shofar. Beis Midosh had shofar plus two trumpets. No, it's only for the mitzvah you're allowed to do that. No, you can't do yom, music on Yom Tif. It's a rabbinic thing, but you can't do it. It's rabbanon that's also, but only for the mitzvah we allow it. Okay, so the Pasuk, the Gemara asks, Could somebody hear two sounds at once? The mitzvah to hear the shofar. And if there's trumpets going also, you won't be able to hear the shofar because you can't hear two things at once. What's the proof that you can't hear two things at once? Well, Tanya, we learned, Zacher v'shamar v'dibar echot. That Hashem said the word Zacher and Shamar and Shamar at once. What's this talking about, anybody? What's it talking about? Which, which words that Hashem says Zohar and Shammah together at once? Shabbos, that's right. If you look at the Aserah, so there's the Ten Commandments in Parshas Yisroi, and you look at the Ten Commandments, that's again in Parshas Veschanan, right? First the Torah describes it when it happens, and then the Torah describes the Ten Commandments when Moshe Rabbeinu repeats it, right? So if you look at it, you'll see that the words are different. In one of the times it says, remember Shabbos, Shomer, Semer, Shabbos. In the other time it says, Sorry, one time it says, Shomer, Shem, Shabbos, guard Shabbos. And the other time it says, Zacher, Shem, Shabbos, remember the Shabbos. So which one did Hashem say? Zacher, remember, or Shomer, guard. So it says this text, 
says the Gemara. Zachar v'shomer v'dibur echad nemru. Hashem said, Zachar and Shomer at once. And we say, Mashein ha pei yochel ladaber. A human mouth cannot do that. Can't say two words simultaneously. Ve'ena oizin yochel l'shmoya. And the ear cannot hear it. So this is proof that you cannot hear two sounds at once. So how is it that on Rosh Hashanah in the base of Middash, you would hear two sounds at once? You hear the shofar plus the trumpets. How could you hear both at once? Says the Gemara, Makach Meirich B'Shoifar. That's why the shofar blast would last longer. So they would blow the shofar together with the trumpets, but then the trumpets would stop and the shofar would keep on blowing. And that way the people listening would be able to hear at least some part of the shofar alone. Clear? Clear? Now, what does that mean? That means if you only hear the end of the shofar, you fulfilled your obligation. That's what it would mean, right? Because you can't hear the shofar and the trumpets together at the same time. But when the shofar, and that's why they would make the shofar last a little longer. So that you can hear the shofar alone. That means even if you only hear the end of the shofar, you are yaitza, you fulfilled your obligation, right? You following the logic? You follow or no? Followed? Right. The Gemara just said that you can't hear two sounds at once. So in the basement of when they have the shofar and the trumpets, how do you fulfill your obligation of hearing the shofar? Because at one point the trumpets would stop and the shofar would keep on blowing. Right? Which means the first half of the shofar you didn't hear because the trumpets were blowing. And the second half, when the shofar continued after the trumpet stopped, now you, re- now you heard it, now you fulfill your obligation. Following? Yes? Says the Gemara Lamemra, does that mean you're saying, if you hear the end of the shofar, but you didn't hear the beginning of the shofar blowing, you fulfilled your obligation? And that would mean that if you heard the beginning of the shofar and not the end, also Yotze, also fulfilled your obligation. Right? You follow the logic or not? You followed it? Right? Because the Gemara is saying that you cannot hear shofar and trumpets at once. And that's why they would make the shofar and the in the basement, they go longer, which means even if you only hear part of the shofar, you still fulfill your obligation because you couldn't hear the first half because it was trumpets blowing then too. Got it? You understand or no? Not so much. Okay, so let's walk through this. In the in the basement midrash, they had trumpets blowing at the same time shofar. And the Gemara asks that you can't hear two sounds at once. So the Gemara answers, no problem. That let's say they would let's say they would. For 10 seconds, there would, would be trumpets and shofar, and then the trumpets would stop, and the shofar would keep on blowing for another 10 seconds. Let's just say, right? So for 10 seconds, the second half, there's no trumpets blowing, so you're able to hear the shofar, right? Why do they need this? One second, just put that aside for a second. You understand what I just said? What does that mean? That means, even if I only heard the second half of the shofar, that's still good enough. Because in the base of this, you couldn't hear the first half of the shofar because there were trumpets blowing. Follow? So that means that even if you only hear part of the shofar, it's still good enough, even if you don't hear the whole thing. Right? You following? You followed or no? Because you didn't hear the whole thing, because part of it, there were trumpets blowing on top of it, you couldn't hear. That's what it would seem like. And the Gemara is asking, that's impossible. It's impossible that you can fulfill your obligation only by hearing half of it. What's the proof? Because Tashma, we learned like this. If you blew the tkiah, and then you did your true in the middle. And then after the true, what do you have to do? Another tekiah. And then after that tekiah, what do you do? Another tekiah for the next set, right? Every set is tekiah, true, and tekiah, tekiah, true, and tekiah, tekiah, true, and tekiah. Right? So you do a tekiah, and then you do a true, and then you do a second tekiah. But instead of making a break between the second tekiah of set number one and tekiah number one of the second set, right? The guy just kept on blowing. So you want to make one long tkiah, half of the tkiah for the old trua, and half the tkiah for the new trua. Follow? That's what you try to do. Is that clear? Clear? So it says like this. Talk about the shayna, if you blew the shayfar first, and then he did his trua, and then this umasha pashniya, when it came to the second trua, or tkiah, he made it go long, kishtayim, long enough for two tkiahs. Ain't be other ela achas. The halacha is, it only counts for one tkiah. It doesn't count for two. What does that mean? That means in order to fulfill your obligation, you can't hear half a tkiah. You have to hear the whole thing. Am I? Someone asks why. According to you, you just said before that even if I only hear the end of the tkiah after the trumpet stop, I fill my obligation. If that's the case, then I could fulfill my obligation with half tkiah. So why not to sell it? They would try Why shouldn't it be 
Let it account for two, because half belongs here and half belongs here. If half a tekiyah is good enough, then why can't this one tekiyah that's very long be half for the end of the first set and half for the beginning of the new set? Is that clear? Says the Gemara, no, no, no. It's true that you can, be, you can fulfill your obligation only by hearing half a tekiyah. But we're not going to split it in half when you blow it in one long thing. Clear? Okay, so there's two different things going on here. On the one hand, at least at the point the Gemara is saying, it's true that, one second. On the one hand, we're saying it's true that if you only hear half the shaifar, good enough. But it doesn't mean we're going to take one long tia and split it in half and make half of it belong to that set and half belong to that set. You can't do that. Okay? But the Gemara asks another problem. Tashma, we have a, we have a problem with this. If someone blows shaifar into a pit, or into like a big um, water place where you hold water, like a cave, or into a big jug, or into a big, uh, what is this called here? Yeah, a pit, a jug, or a place where you have water, a cistern. Yeah, ah. Uh. So in kol shaifar shama, if you hear the actual sound of the shaifar, you have to fulfill your obligation. Vim kol avara shama, but if you heard the sound of the echo, la yotze, you didn't fulfill your obligation. Yeah. So now here's the question: Before you hear echo, what do you hear? The sound of the shaifar itself. And if you're allowed to be yotze with half, if you're allowed to be yotze the shaifar even just by hearing part of it, then why isn't it good enough? Why should the echo ruin it? Because before I heard the echo. I actually heard the shaifar. Clear? You hear an echo That's what the Gemara is saying. Even when you hear an echo, you first hear the original sound. I don't know, but let's just say the fact is, you heard the sh before you hear the echo, you hear the actual sound, right? Which means then, hmm? Yeah, you heard the same thing, but first you hear the original, then you hear the echo. But as long as you hear the original first, I should be, it should be enough. Especially since you just said that hearing half the shaifar is good enough. So maybe the second half of the shifra I didn't hear because the echo was making it, was ruining it. But before the echo started, there was at least a little bit of time when I heard the actual shifra, and that should be good enough. Clear? Because it's all going on the premise that you're allowed to fulfill your obligation by hearing part of it. How do we know you're allowed to fulfill your obligation by hearing part of it? Because in the base of Migdash, they wouldn't hear the first half of the shifra because there were trumpets, but the second half of the shifra they did hear because the trumpet stopped. Clear? So Gamora asks, am I... Why is it not good enough when you blow the shofar into a pit? Late but before the echo started, I was able to hear a little bit of the shofar. Mikami de la kala before the echo ruined it. Clear? The Gemara says no, no, no. Ella, rather, tarti koli mechad gavalimishdami. If you hear, you cannot hear two sounds from one person, me and my echo. But mitre gavimishdami, but two sounds from two different people that I can hear. Okay, so now we're saying like this. In the, in the Beis Amikdash, the sound of the shofar and the sound of the trumpet didn't come from one person. It came from two different people, trumpet and shofar. And that's why I'm allowed to, that's why I can hear it. Because you can hear two sounds from two different people. But two sounds coming from one person, that I can't hear. So when Hashem is speaking and he says two words at once, you can't hear that. Because two words at once, from one, from, coming from one place, from Hashem himself. And the same thing is true when you have an echo. Because the two sounds are the same person, it's hard to hear which one's which. And that's why you can't fulfill your obligation. But in the shofar, when the sound of the trumpet comes from one person and the sound of the shofar comes from another person, you can hear, okay, that's shofar, that's trumpet, and therefore fulfill your obligation. Clear? 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 Okay, says the Gemara like this. One second, is that true? Is it possible to hear two sounds from two different people? But Tanya, we learned it used to be in the old days that one person would read the Torah and Shabbos on Shabbos and Shul, and another person would read the translation of the Torah in Aramaic. But so that's that's the halach. But but you shouldn't have two people reading at once and two people reading the translation at once. Why? Because you cannot hear the sound of two different people at the same time. Ah, so if I cannot hear to send two different people at the same time, how come I can hear the shofar and the trumpet at the same time in, this, in the Beis Midrash? Clear? 
Says the Gemara, Holy Dumya, no, no, no. Hmm? Oh, we're taking that back now. We're taking back the fact that you can only hear part of it. Because if that's the case, you should be able to hear, you should be able to be Yaitse from the, from the, by the echo. Because before the echo started, you heard the shofar. And from the fact that you can't be Yaitse with that means you can't be Yaitse with only part of it. So we're giving you a new answer and saying, you're only Yaitse if you hear the whole thing. But the way you're able to hear the whole thing in the in the English is because it's two different sounds. One's trumpet, one's shofar. But now we're saying, even two different sounds, two different people you can't hear. Proof that Allah is, you can't have two people reading the Torah at once. Because you can't hear the sound of two different people. Clear? Even, you can't, even if it's the same thing, but if it's coming from two different people, you can't hear it. Okay. So, no, no, no. Hol dumya. You can't compare the shofar to reading the Torah. Ella, rather, you should compare it, le seifa, to another statement in that Mishnah, which is, bahalal of a Megillah, when it comes to halal, singing the halal, and the Megillah, even if 10 people are reading the Megillah out loud, or 10 people are singing halal out loud, you can still hear it. Why? Alma, even the, not just because it's a song, even a song, it's hard to say that I hear that person. You hear all of them together. You don't hear that person. So I have to be able to hear, hmm? But I'm not yoyed to that way. I have to hear a certain person and say, oh man, and especially when it comes to the shofar, I can't hear the shofar and the trumpets. I have to be hearing the shofar. But says the Gemara, the reason why when it comes to Halal and the Megillah, the reason why you're able to hear 10 people at once and still fulfill your obligation, even the Chaviv, because the Megillah is so precious to me and Halal is so precious to me, I'm going to pay special attention to listen to one person and fulfill my obligation. Hachanami here too, even the Chaviv, because the shofar sound is so precious to me, even though there's trumpets blasting, Yoiv Daita, I'm going to pay special attention, Misham, and I'll hear it. So, what do we see from the Gemara? How precious the shofar is. That even though there were trumpets and other sounds going on in the Bes Middash, because the shofar is so precious, the person listening would be able to pay special attention and hear the sound of the shofar, even though there's trumpets blasting. That's the first thing we see from the Gemara. Now we see a second thing. If that's the case, if you can already hear, the shofar, why do the trumpets have to stop early and let the shofar blast go longer? Why is the shofar blast going longer than the trumpets if I anyways can hear the shofar? Because it, it's so precious to me. It says the Gemara Leda, to let everybody know that you know what the main mitzvah of today is? Shofar. With all the details of Rosh Hashanah and with all the things that go on in Rosh Hashanah, the most important, the main thing is the shofar. And that's why the shofar blast has to go a little longer. Clear? Okay. So that's for the mitzvah itself. We see from the Gemara that the mitzvah itself is the most precious thing. It's the most important things of the shofar. And we learned that the shofar has to have tkiya and a trua, And there's two different types of trua, And that's why we have three sets. Right? One for each type of trua, And then one for the combination of the both. Clear? Sorry, I'm moving a little faster. But we have to go to this funeral soon. Okay, now we're going to learn about the message of the shofar. This comes from the Rambam. In the Helchus Tshuva, he writes, Even though the blowing of the shofar, the Torah doesn't give a reason. The Torah just says, blow shofar. Right, we saw the Pesach. The Pesach doesn't say anything. The Pesach just says, we have a day of remembrance of Trua. And then the Pesach until him says, Tiku b'chayda, shofar. Blow the shofar on this month when there is the new moon at the, at the Yom Tif. But the Pesach doesn't say why to blow a shofar, what the message is. So it says the Rambam, it's true that the reason why we blow a shofar is because Hashem wants it to be done, without explaining why. But Rambam is Yeshboi. There is a message hidden in there. Kolaymar, it's as if the shofar is telling you, wake up, you sleeping people from your sleep. And you people who are half dozed out. Hikitsu, wake up from your dozing state. Wake up and do what? Investigate your actions. See how your actions have been. And do teshuva, change your ways. Remember your creator. That's what the shofar is. It's a wake up call. Wake up. There's a new year. Wake up. There's an Abish there. Wake up. There's a Torah, Mitzvah. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Elu. This is speaking to They forget the truth of Hashem. In the wasted things that they spend their time on. And they spend all their days doing nothingness. 
which is of no use, and it's not going to save them. Habitu, look, look at your souls. Habitu, look at your way of your living. And the path you're going of Yazakol Echlikem, and each of you should abandon all of your bad behaviors. And abandon any thoughts that are not good. Pretty powerful message. The Fichach, therefore, says the Rambam. Tzarech Kol Adam, this is amazing, these words that the Rambam is about to tell us. Tzarech Kol Adam, she yira atzmei kol hashana kol a person should see himself all year long. Ki'ilu chetziv zakai, he should look at himself and imagine, I have exactly 50% good deeds, v'chetziv chayiv, and I have exactly 50% of bad things. V'chein, and also, not just myself, kol lo'olam, the entire world. V'chetziv zakai, I should imagine that the entire world is exactly 50% good, v'chetziv chayiv, and 50% of the world is bad. I do one bad action. I made myself go down. That's called in the entire world. To the side of bad. The that caused the world to bring destruction. I do one good deed, one mitzvah. I bent myself. That's called in the entire world. To the side of merit, to the side of schut. The and I caused for myself, for lahem, and for the entire world, to shua, salvation, hafsala, saving. Shinema the Pasuk says, it's Sadiq, you say, Olam, one person, or Sadiq, is the foundation of the world. This is the one person who does that one good act to tip the scale and bring the whole world into a better place. Think about that when you're listening to the Shafar. means that because of this, no go call base Israel, it's a custom of all Yidin. The hard base but to give lots of stucca, with mice and toivim and good deeds, the lasik the mitzvahs. And do extra mitzvahs, made Rosh Hashanah Vajim Kippurim from Rosh Hashanah Tayyim Kippur. Yes, and be called Shana more than the whole year. Because every year I'm supposed to look at the world hiding as if it's hanging in the balance, hanging at 50 50. How much more so between Rosh Hashanah and Kippur? And the minute is people wake up in the middle of the night to pray, and they say different words of like, uh, of, you know, Looking to Hashem until the day starts. This is talking about Slichot. So here he writes the Minigas to do Slichot between Hashem and Kippur. I think that's what Spartan do, right? When do Spartan do Slichot? Uh, All of Elul, right? Yeah. Do they do also between Hashem and Kippur? Yeah. So Chabad, we only do it the last two weeks before Hashem. But this is the same idea. Okay, so now we have the mitzvah of Shefer. Torah says to do it. We see it's precious. We see that it's uh, the main mitzvah of the day. And now we have the message. What's the message of the shofar? Wake up, do teshuvah. There's a whole world waiting for you to do your good actions. Now we get to a new level of the shofar, another deeper level. The Mishnah says like this. The Gemara says like this. The imu lufanai. Hashem says, say before me, Malchios, you should say psukim about me being king. V'zachrinus, say psukim about how I remember you. V'shoifros, and say psukim about the shofar. That's what the Pasuk says. That's what the Gemara says. And that's what we do in our davening. If you look at the davening of Rosh Hashanah, there are three big brachas that we do in the middle of the Shemana Esrei, in the middle of the Amidah. One bracha we read, Pesukim about Hashem being king. And one bracha we read, Pesukim about Hashem remembering us, remembering His promises to us. And a third we read, Pesukim about the importance of the Shaifah. And the Gemara explains why I have to do all these three things. Malchiyos, why do I say Pesukim about Hashem being king? Kedei shetam lechun yalechem. So that you should make me your king. Zechariah remember say psukim about my remembering. So that I should remember you for good, says Hashem. And how do you do this? How do you cause me to remember? And how do you cause me to become your king? The shofar through the shofar. So now we have a new level of the shofar. Not just the shofar as a message telling us to wake up, but with the shofar, it's like us crowning Hashem as king. That's a whole new level of Rosh Hashanah. It's not just a question of Hashem judging us. And it's not just a question of me having to fix my actions. But it's actually about me making Hashem my king. I have to make Hashem my personal king. I have to crown Hashem. That's what I'm doing with the shofar. Clear? In the next page, we see a medrash which says, I'll just tell you what it says there. The medrash says that there are two levels. I and mean, use an example. A king comes to a city and he conquers the city. And the people tell, and the advisors tell the king, hey king, go tell the people what to do. You now own the city. So says the king, one second. 
if they don't accept me as king, so what am I telling them to do things for? First, they have to accept me as their king, and then I can tell them what to do. And that's what Rosh Hashanah is. Rosh Hashanah is, first of all, accept Hashem as your king. Now that you accept Hashem as your king, now you can take the message of the shofar from the Rambam and say, okay, so if Hashem is your king, are you behaving the way you're supposed to? See two levels there? One level of the shofar is, I say, Hashem, you are my king. The second level of the shofar is, one second, if Hashem is your king, are you living the way you're supposed to as Hashem's, as Hashem, as Hashem's subject? Follow? So there's two steps to this teshuva. The first step is, Hashem, you are my king. And when, we, when the Yid blows the shofar, we make Hashem king. And making Hashem king on Rosh Hashanah is not just making Hashem my king, but Hashem becomes king over the whole world that way. Why? Because why did Hashem create the world to begin with? For me and you, Hashem made the whole world so that we can serve him. So on Rosh Hashanah, Hashem says, okay, I made this whole world and I made it so that Jews can serve me. Okay, let me see. Are they serving me? Do they actually want me to be the king? And we move, when we blow the shofar, we say, yes, Hashem, we want you to be king. And that way, Hashem becomes king over the whole world because now the whole thing is worth it. The whole reason why Hashem made the whole world is so that Jews should have a connection to him. So when we say, yes, we want